Okay, and welcome back students who have who are taking uh, financial accounting and we're working on the chapter one exercises group B um, and we are now on problem number 28 um, and as you can see it does take time to do these problems I mean you know uh, number 27 um, it had said it takes anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes um, you know that's what it tells you in the textbook to be able to do the problem and with all of my explaining and everything, it, you know, that was a 33 minute video. So realize that, you know, as you do accounting, you know, uh, you know, it's going to take you time to do the problems. All right. So just, but accounting is about understanding and application. If you don't do the application, if you're not doing the problems and by virtue of watching this video, hopefully you work through the problem yourself. Um, and if you've, you know, then looked at the answers, and if you are off, like your answer doesn't match, you know, hopefully you tried to figure out why. And if you still don't know, that's what brought you to these videos. And, you know, it's under the assumption that you've actually worked through these problems. All right. Um, I'm not saying watch every single video. You know, watch only the ones that you need to watch when you don't, uh, when you don't get something. Okay. All right. 1-28. Um, it says here. The following are the balances of the assets, liabilities, and equity of Julie's coffee shop uh, at October 31st, 2014. So these are the accounts, and these are the balances in those accounts at October 31st. The requirements. What type of business organization is Julie's coffee shop to prepare the balance sheet? for the business at October 31st and see what does the balance sheet report. All right, so number one, what type of business organization is Julie's Coffee Shop? All right, that's easy, all right, because it says um, uh, it's Julie's Coffee Shop, but when I look at the accounts, what I wanna be doing is I wanna be looking at the equity section of the uh, chart of accounts. Right, or the listing in the, or of the uh, ledger accounts. Remember, the chart of accounts is nothing more than a table of contents for the ledger accounts. And a trial balance is nothing more than a chart of accounts with the balances in those ledger accounts. So this here, you know, we can actually create a trial balance out of it. And when we do, when we look at the equity section, um, that will determine what kind of business entity we're, work, we're working with. So we have retained earnings. And immediately because I have retained earnings, I know that I'm looking at a corporation. Okay. Why? Because in corporations, they sell common stock. And all of the profit or loss that they have gets closed out to retained earnings. If this was a sole proprietorship, which means, and this is the way most um, proprietor, proprietor, oh, I can't even spell proprietorship. Um, if it's, most business start out as a sole proprietorship, meaning, you know, the owner, uh, the person who starts the business, they're the owner, they work in the business, and they're not worried about stock. Well, they have a cap, what's called a capital account, right? So it would be something like, you know, John Smith Capital. And then they also have a John Smith Withdrawal Account. And so um, any of the profit or loss that is on the income statement gets closed out to the capital account, right? Because why? It's John Smith. So he doesn't have to worry about anybody else. He doesn't have, he's not sharing with common stock. It's not a proprietorship. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. It's not a, a partnership. All right. Um, and so anything that he earns goes into the capital account. And then from the capital account, um, we also have a draw account because, you know, if he wants his money, you know, um, it could be taken directly out of the capital account. However, 
that doesn't show the the withdrawings okay it shows the money going in um, and you'd have to look at the capital account in order to see the money coming out but um, if he wants to go and get a bank loan the bank is going to want to see what they had as capital and then what was withdrawn okay so that's why you have a separate account and it's also not a partnership partnership right because with a partnership um, you would have these capital and draw accounts uh, also <clears throat> but the difference being is remember to have a partnership you have more than one person is part owner of the business based upon um, you know they you know what they've decided is part of the equity sharing so when the income uh, when your profit or loss is being transferred to the uh, uh, capital accounts let's say there's two partners here John Smith capital and that's a 60% share All right now of course I, sh I shouldn't write that like that um, I should write it capital and let's say it's Jane Doe capital okay if John Smith is gets 60 percent and Jane Doe gets 40 percent okay when the profit when the profit or loss uh, is determined at the end of the accounting period well if let's just use easy numbers that's a hundred thousand well then sixty thousand would go to John Smith and forty thousand would go to Jane Doe right so that's kind of like how all of that works and that was an extra five minutes of me trying to explain the differences between the uh, entities that businesses generally are are part of so as I said um, in answer to number one here you know we know that this here is a corporation okay why because we have a retained earnings account and we have a common stock account so a corporation All right number two prepare the balance sheet of the business at October 31st all right so I'm gonna do this on a blank screen uh, blank slide but the thing that we need to know um, it, okay first of all when it comes to balance sheets and any financial statements um, formatting is important and I'll try to touch upon the formatting issues as we go along um, I also need to determine uh, what accounts are what so you know cash we know that's an asset retained earnings um, is equity because remember on the balance sheet right what's on the balance sheet our accounting equation assets is equal to liabilities plus equity so I have to identify each one of these um, accounts payable is a liability accounts receivable is oops an asset office equipment is something we own it's an asset common stock is equity notes payable is a liability and supplies is an asset so we have Julie's coffee shop right? we need to format correctly and I realize that my handwriting isn't going, going to be uh, the most correct and I'm not going to be writing everything out here so I'm you, I should write out the words Julie's coffee shop as part of the heading okay you want to see what it looks like you know look at the answer to see what that looks like but our heading has the name of the business it has what kind of financial statement it is and there are no abbreviations here in the heading by the way but I'm just doing it for the safe time and then this is for the date of this is October 31st 2014 okay so I can write this uh, the date here as part of the heading one of two ways I can make it October 31st 2014 okay or I can write it like this as of October 31st 2014 all right um, both ways mean that since the balance sheet is the balances in the account as of a specific date and that's the date we're choosing okay October 31st right, um, I can write it either way as of that date meaning since the beginning of the business all the way up to this point in time 
or just what my balances in those accounts are at that point in time. Also notice that it is, you know, when you're making the heading, you know, you center alignment. All right, so um, it's in the middle alignment. It's in the middle of your uh, financial statement, okay? Generally, you, now remember I had said lines are not important on a paper, okay? The formatting, the formatting is, so you just saw me draw a line. Well, it doesn't matter whether that line is there or not, okay? So you, you know, if you have a, a paper that has four column, you know, ledger paper, use four columns. If it's two columns, use two columns. If it's blank copy paper, it's a blank copy paper. The lines on the paper don't matter, right? What matters is whether the information is presented in the correct fashion. Now, generally, there's two different ways. Um, let me back up here. There's two different ways of presenting the information. All right, our accounting equation, assets equaling liabilities plus equity. We can either present it horizontally in a horizontal format, and throughout the book you'll um, mostly see it that way, but it can be done in a vertical uh, format. All right? um, you see that mostly in annual reports for huge, you know, large companies. Okay, But when we uh, present the information in a vertical format, uh, horizontal format, it's easier to, to grasp because why? We have our assets on the left, and then we have our liabilities over here, and then we have our equity over here. Now, the equity could be called equity, it could be called stockholders' equity. Um, the, you know, if it's incorporated, it's going to be stockholders' equity. And I didn't write this all on one line, you know, could be all on one line. But having it in this format, you know, that allows us to think in terms of assets as equal to, okay? Now, underneath our assets, you know, we're going to list our assets. And realize that what we're doing here is, is we're building a foundation, okay? This is by no means the absolute uh, way that this works. I mean, I can create this in a few other different ways, right? But for right now, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible, right? So if you went back to your other information, you know, to the data, we saw that we had cash, okay? Um, I know we had an accounts receivable, and I'm just going to abbreviate this here, all right? You, know, you normally would write that out. I remember we had supplies, and I think we had office equipment, And I'm going to just abbreviate that also. Um, you would write that out also. Okay, so let me jump up to see the numbers. So cash is 19, receivables 1400, office equipment 142, and supplies 750. Oops. Okay, so um, I'm going to, my cash is 19,000. Now, if all of your numbers are all going to have zero cents, okay, then on the, the statement, then it's acceptable not to put them there. But you put the, you don't round, okay? Whatever the balances are, are is what the balances are, okay? And as soon as you have something that has cents to it, like let's say 12 cents, that means regardless of whatever the other balances are, you have to show the cents, okay? Even if it is just zero, zero. Zero zero, right? Zero zero, right? You have to show the sense because of that one that's you know, you know, is not zero cents, right? But in this case here, since they're all zeros, um, uh, we don't have to show the zeros. The other exception to this is also if you're talking about like uh, annual reports with you know multi-million dollar uh, companies, on uh, multi-million dollars, you know. 12 cents doesn't matter, so they don't show the, the, the cents there because they can just, you know, you know round from $34,936.12 to $936 even and round the other numbers off. It's just, 
irrelevant becomes insignificant and irrelevant at that point in time All right so um, the accounts receivable was uh, yeah 1400 1400 the supplies were 750 and the office equipment was 14,200 now notice I used commas right? and also I'm going to put a dollar sign at the top of this column here okay um, it's important that you do it that way right? now I have one underlined and remember when you have an underline what that means is that there's a mathematical calculation all right when you have a double underline that means you have an end of a calculation so what am I adding all up here well I'm adding up my total assets and I have to write out this description here okay just to write total is not good right you have to write in total assets you don't just write in assets either and you put your dollar sign and the, the amount 35,350 and since that's the end of a calculation a double underline has to be put okay so now for our liabilities I know we had an accounts payable and I'm just abbreviating here and I also know I had a note payable right so my accounts payable was 800 and I put my dollar sign there for the column and I had 4,000 as my note payable so the total of those two are my total liabilities now again type out write out the liabilities right, the word liabilities here but I'm not just for space wise and I'm at 4,800 now notice I don't put a double underline underneath that and the reason why is because and let me just format this a little bit differently okay so liabilities here and that's centered okay just like the assets is centered over the list okay um, my total liabilities are 4,800 but I don't double underline there because I'm remember it's liabilities plus equity so I'm going to use this number again as part of a, another mathematical calculation right. now I'm going to uh, I have my stockholders and I'm going to abbreviate here okay and of course that's centered and I have common stock and I have retained earnings and I'm abbreviating here remember you don't abbreviate I'm only abbreviating because of uh, you know my handwriting and you know things like this okay um, the other thing I should note maybe I should write it a little bit better here um, this here total liability should be indented okay there should be an, a slight indentation right there okay just like I should have a an indentation for my total and I'm just going to abbreviate stockholders equity right here okay again write that all out so I have common stock of 18,000 and I have retained earnings of 12,550 okay so I have my retained earnings here of 12,550 and my um, I'm sorry Mark yeah that's my retained earnings and my common stock was 18,000 here now notice I didn't put a dollar sign here okay I didn't put a dollar sign right here okay um, you could if you want is it not ne is it necessary no because you have your dollar sign up here at the top of the column and remember we're adding these figures up so we're, we're adding the 800 and the 4,000 okay that's going to give me 4,800 right but because that number is going to be used again in a mathematical calculation I don't use a dollar sign right and since this 8,000 is still in the same column and it's part of a mathematical mathematical calculation I don't need a dollar sign there so 18,000 and 12,500 is 30,550 okay I had an underline and that's a mathematical calculation 
But now, here my total stockholders equity was was indented, right? But now I'm not going to indent because why? I have total liabilities I'm abbreviating and stockholders and I'm abbreviating okay equity here Q I T Y right and this here is now flush left okay with the rest of these account remember this is indented okay and this is indented also but when I put my total uh, stockholders equity, uh, total liabilities and stockholders equity, I'm making that flush left. I'm no, I'm no longer indenting that amount. And when it comes down to it, what numbers am I adding up? Well, I'm adding up this 4,800 and this 30,000. Okay. And since that's the case, I have an underline underneath my equity here. Okay one underline. Why? Because this 30,000 is still part of a mathematical calculation. So when I add the two up, you know, that should equal my $35,350. And that number gets a double underline because that's the end of the calculation. And I add my dollar sign in front of it because, you know, it's represented in dollars. So that's the balance sheet. Okay. Um, if this was in a, remember, this is horizontal format, meaning we're going across here, right? Is equal to liabilities plus my equity, okay? It could have been, I could have had assets here, and then I would have had total assets of 35 here, right? And then I would have had my liabilities here, and I would have had total liabilities, I had an equity here, and I would have gone down using the vertical format. And so this would have been 4,800. My equity would have been 30,550. And then I would have my total liabilities and equity of 35,350. Okay. And it would have gone straight down the page. Okay. It wouldn't have been across the page. And that's what the vertical format would have looked like. And you'll see it in, later in the book, so don't get too bent out of shape over it right now. But for this problem in and of itself right now, um, this is what the financial statement should look like. And I'm not going to go back over and repeat you know, things that I already said. So watch the videos again. You make notes along the way. But And, of course, you're going to you know use capital letters. Spelling has to be correct. Even though I abbreviate it, you do not abbreviate yours. I abbreviate it only because of trying to do this work here, okay? If I was creating uh, one that I'm going to hand to a banker, okay, an outside third party, um, everything would be written out. I would not be using abbreviations, okay? And it would be very, very neat. Whether, and I'd probably be doing it on a blank copy paper, and it would have been typed up in a Word document. Trying to use Excel is a pain trying to get the formatting correct. You spend a lot more time doing that than it's worth. It's easier just to type out your uh, financial statement in a Word document, and once you have the formatting set, every you know accounting period, all you have to do is just change the numbers. All right, You don't have to be messing around with it so much. But, uh, you know, people, for whatever reason, they want to use Excel, and then they, you know, but they're not expert at it, and they don't get the, f uh, the formatting correct, okay? Uh, because why it's in cells? Well, there, it, the spacing should be appropriate. Uh, the you know, there should be you know the different columns, and they should be spaced appropriately. I mean, go ahead and into Excel and try to input a a dollar sign in a cell, and see you know see how much of a difficult time you have doing that. Okay, and you'll start to understand why I said it's easier just to type this stuff up in a, a Word document than it is to be doing it on uh, an Excel spreadsheet. But this is the, the financial statement. If you want to see what it should look like, you know, look at the answer. Okay. Um, and that's more closely, uh, you know, I mean, obviously that's what it, it should look like. All right, number three. Okay, so what does the balance sheet report? Okay. Um, well, what does the balance sheet report? 
well it reports the the financial position of the company all right as of a specific date okay and what that means is, is that all of these here figures that you have here you know are the balances as of that date meaning from the the day that the business opened and all of the transactions that have occurred up to transactions that have occurred all the way up to this date is what's reflected here it's not for a period of time like you see on the income statement the income statement and you know i realize you might not have seen you know, i mean you saw it in the chapter um, and we haven't worked through a problem here yet um, with the income statement but the, the income statement is for a period of time it's showing the operations of the business meaning it's you know we made sales and we had expenses and this is how much money we made okay that is different than a financial position okay that money that we made oops, that money that we made ends up over here in retained earnings just one portion of the uh, uh, the balance sheet you know the balance sheet we have to take in consideration everything we own everything we owe and whatever is left over ends up being stockholders equity okay and that's why you know the accounting equation needs to be in balance now it's not to say that when the, the business closes okay let's say that for some reason this business decided to close all right well you know you might not get all of your accounts receivable back okay I mean sure you're owed 1400 but you might only be able to collect 800 of it you know you have office equipment of 14,200 well now it's used it's not worth 14,200 anymore it's only worth 3,000 okay so you're not going to get back the full amount of these assets but you do owe that full amount of your liabilities and you pay off your liabilities first and then any remaining money that's left over goes to your equity you know to your stockholders retained or you know um, or if you're a sole proprietorship goes back to the owner the partners in a partnership okay and so it's you know the balance sheet shows the financial position of the company at that moment in time all right so that's it for this problem and i'll see you in the next video uh, for the next one and if you had any you know if you didn't understand something you know go ahead and rewind the video and uh, if you still have a question feel free to contact an instructor all right